Hi, my name is Anusha Ramnathan, and we are here to talk about reading and reflecting on texts, which is a part of the MED program from NCTE. So let's begin with a very fundamental question. What is reading? What is reading according to you? Well, primarily, reading is an act. It is an act of receiving information. It is an act of decoding that information. It is an act of interpreting the decoded information. It is an act of then processing that information and deciding what to do with that information. And if that is reading, then what is reflection? Well, reflection is a mixture of reading and further ideating on what you have read. It involves processing the decoded information received. It involves analyzing, evaluating, you know, uh, deciding what to do with that information. It decides mapping it to the existing schemas in your head that you already have of how you think of the world and of society or of a concept and then deciding whether you want to include this information in your schema, you want to expand your schema, whether you want to change the way you think of the world or do you want to discard the information? Or if it fits perfectly with what you have, do you want to add it to your collection of what you know of the world and then finally to act upon your decision so it is a process which is active the key word is act it is the basic important word is to act right so let's look at what is schema right what do we need to do to read? While reading, we need to be active. We need to understand that it is not a passive task. It is called reception, but it is an act that is there. We are thinking while we are reading, and that is constant. It is always on. Our thinking processes are always on and it therefore can be so exhausting because you are processing so much, right? Remember how much we were looking at in terms of thinking. So let's look at something. When you talk about thinking while reading, he tore a plate, huh? He tore a plate you know, something that looks like China crockery, something that is made of stainless steel. Can he tear it? What do you mean he tore a plate? But then how can he tear a plate? Can he tear a plate? Can this be true? What if the plate were a leaf plate? What if the plate were made of paper? How much of thinking, how much of prior knowledge gets involved in reading is, is, a, is amazing. You know, when you take up a simple sentence, it's a four word sentence. He tore a plate. He tore a plate. And that is it. But you have to think through what are the different kinds of plates? What are the materials that this place can be made of? Which one of those materials can be torn? Which of those materials are regular? Where do you think he comes from? And as a result of all of this, you would also be like, he tore a plate. If he uses leaf plate, then uh, is he coming from India? Is he coming from Africa? Uh, is, he, is he from the Asian continent and the African continents? Uh, he tore a paper plate, or oh, he can now be from everywhere, but maybe he is slightly rich. Uh, because in the developing countries and the underdeveloped countries, paper plates are not that cheap. Uh, or maybe is it a newspaper plate that is, you know, the kind that you get in Bhilpuri, etc. 
you have to have so much of prior knowledge and you have to bring that constantly into even something as simple as a four word sentence. Tear a plate and you have to think. So what is it that reading is? Reading is basically this. I mean, this is a kind of a data diagram that comes in, but um, you will find that this is primarily what uh, reading is consisting of. So Mercia Olstein have given us a diagram, but you also have uh, a lot of other diagrams that come in. So it's based on it, but you have a schema, you talk about what the form is, and those are the top-down skills. You have certain knowledge of the world, of the concepts of how society is supposed to behave, how culture is. Uh, you have an understanding of what genres are there, you know, like is, is it humor, is it drama, is it uh, detective fiction, uh, is, it, um, is it poetry? And you need to understand all of it because it makes a difference in how you read a book or how you read a piece of text. If you are reading um, something which is in the humorous vein, no has a very different connotation. If you're thinking about it as irony, uh, then it's very different, you know? If, if you're talking about the word no, for instance, I can say, um, do you like my shirt? And the answer could be no. Now, depends. Uh, you could say that it's no, or you could say it is sarcasm. Uh, like, you know, how can I not like that shirt? Or someone says, do you like my shirt? And you say, yeah, 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 so good. And it doesn't sound good. And so that is irony and you need, because now in the tone, in my voice, I could tell you in a way I could indicate something of what I meant. But when you're reading it, you have to bring in all of this to that text. And that is why it is about your understanding of culture, your understanding of the society, the position, the genre, I mean, in a straightforward romantic comedy you may not have so much of sarcasm but in a very detective fiction and in kinds of um, you know where there is high crime there may be a lot of irony drama has a lot of irony in it uh, you need to have a metacognition of all the processes as such. You definitely need to understand the words, the sentences, the grammar. You need to understand the writing mechanics of how to organize ideas, how are, if the ideas are presented differently, that uh, what does that mean? What is the kind of handwriting? You need to have an understanding of how language works primarily, and that is the bottom-up skills. Which, this is something that we teach a lot in school. We teach spelling, we teach pronunciation, we teach grammar, we teach writing mechanics. But, you know, reading does not just involve the bottom-up skills. The reading also involves the top-down skills of metacognition and schemata, etc. So, is reading difficult? Huh. Well, it is definitely complex. Uh, it is certainly a very complex process, but then so is breathing. It is not just a simple exhale, inhale. There is a lot of things that are happening in your body. The lungs are taking in oxygen. Then this oxygen is getting, uh, you know, it, it goes through the blood supply. It purifies your blood. The blood goes down to all the parts of your body, carrying oxygen cells in it and so on and so forth. It is a very, very complex process. And we do it every day, every moment, even while we are sleeping. So can we read and reflect? Of course. So that's all from, for now, for this video. But I hope you think a little bit more about what is reading and what is reflecting and have more reading and reflecting to do to analyze.